Okay. Uh, no, uh, my name is uh, Mariano Martinez Peck. I am uh, currently working as a software engineer for Interactions Inc., uh, which develops uh, this motor. Uh, in this talk, I uh, will show some um, application de development, but mostly uh, a few nice things about deployment with VA and some IoT, Internet of Things, you know, um, which uh, I think are very uh, nice to see. Before starting with the with the uh, with the demo, let me give you a brief uh, uh, company updates. Uh, basically, uh, Seth Berman, uh, if you're looking, he has been attending to all previous uh, small talks. This year, unfortunately, to the Michael, um, he's now the CEO and president of the company. Uh, he's doing really well, so it uh, it looks. Uh, it, it, the company looks uh, very good uh, with, with him. Um, I joined the team on January uh, as part of the engineering team to develop uh, the VS monitor. Uh, so somehow the team grow. Um, we have been uh, customers that have been upgrading to new versions of VS monitor. That is very important for us because we know it, it's hard for customers to upgrade uh, to new to new VA version because usually it involves an effort. Uh, we do our best to make that effort to be as little as possible. We have migration guides from version to version. But still, when we see customers that are upgrading, that is good news for us because it means that what we provide is enough for them to upgrade. So that is happy and we are happy about that. We have new customers that are, are, are getting uh, new licenses, so we are also happy about that. And finally, after six years of, of a, a from scratch VM development, we have finally the new VM working in 32 bit and 64 bit on Unix and Windows. Last year, we present, the last year release was only for Windows, and this year, uh, this last release on, on July, we also provide the Linux support. So we, this has been a path of the last six years of VM development, so this is uh, exciting news. Okay, the rest will be all uh, about uh, the demo. So uh, let me get that uh, started. Basically, what uh, I will show is a uh, Seaside web application. Do you know what a Seaside application is? Okay, cool. So in this case, it's, it, it's like a hello world, uh, just a little bit nicer. It's a traffic light. Uh, so our goal of, for this demo, I will be using this example of a traffic light made with CSI. Okay? Now, <clears throat> let's go to the code. Um, here, I can show you from scratch. This is environments, which is the VA tool to manage multiple images at the same time. I have this image here already saved with what I'm going to draw. And <clears throat> the first thing uh, I will start showing is how you would develop this CSI uh, application. You know, the development time. Uh, I don't have the time to call all of it, but I will quickly show you the the code and how you, you would run it, etc. So, um, for most models, you have the concept of package. You know, it's a, a, it groups classes. Uh, in this model, this is called apps. Uh, it's a group uh, of classes. Uh, then, most dialects also have a, like a, a bundle or a metachina group or whatever, which is a group of apps or other apps. Okay? So, that is called maps in this model. Uh, a map is a set of applications or other required maps. Okay? So, when you develop a CSI uh, application, in, in this case, I will, uh, this, this tool shows me all the maps of this image. Here you can see mine, the CSI 
traffic light uh, map. Uh, here you can see the applications that are included on, on that map, and here the required maps of that map. Okay. Um, what if a good practice is to split your maps on two, uh, one for development and one for runtime. Why? Because, for example, for development, uh, I may want to load Seaside with all the tests, for example. And if I am <coughs> in runtime, I would like just uh, just Seaside uh, uh, runtime, not only test. And you can include here uh, some other development tools. Um, and then, in my case, I like to make the development require the right time. In this case, you see the, the, the development map has a, a, the, the right time as a required map. So you see the right time. For the moment, just focus on these two apps, ignore the rest. These two apps, two apps is the one that actually has the code of, of that uh, traffic lights that we show you. Um, so this is only what should be loaded at runtime, okay? When we are creating an image for deployment. Uh, so far, so good? Okay. So in this case, uh, the, most of the code is uh, right here. This is a traffic line. Uh, uh, this tool, it's the application manager. Here I can browse not the maps, but the apps that are on my image, all the apps of the image. So we look for, uh, I think I created a, a filter view. Uh, uh, anyway, CSI traffic light. Uh, yeah, CSI traffic light. So here is this uh, app which has all the, the code of that. Uh, if you want, I can start by showing how to to run it. Uh, basically, what I will do is uh, uh, the first thing CSI uh, uh, makes you do is to register an application, uh, a CSI application. Uh, like it, in, the, in, in this case, it would, it would be the semaphore. It's uh, it's like your project, your your domain application. Um, so <clears throat> it's a, a little script. Uh, basically, uh, I have it. Uh, I have it uh, here. For example, how you do that? Uh, in this case, it's uh, basically this, which is uh, you send a root component and you say just register. So I will evaluate this now so that my CSI uh, applications are. Uh, Register, okay? Um, then if you browse basically the register, it just says, okay, uh, CSI admin, register this application uh, with, the, with the perfect traffic light, put this error calendar, these libraries, etc. This is just CSI code, it's not uh, nothing from my own, it's just quite registered in the app. And then if you quickly browse this, this root component, the CSI render content arm, just display the, the header, the title, and then says uh, render traffic light on, and this one says HTML render traffic light component, and traffic light component just answer this CSI traffic light component. So we wrote this guy, and you see the render content arm, this guy is the one that renders all of the lights, uh, etc. So let's uh, let's start a server. So remember, here we are at development time. So I will run CSide from here. Uh, CSide control panel. I will create a CSide adapter on a given port. I will let the default 8080. Uh, I will start. <coughs> When we start the adapter, okay. Uh, now, if I take uh, Chrome and I go localhost, localhost uh, 8080, traffic light, I should get the traffic light here. Uh, possibly, it, I think 
final thing you just create and switch color. Okay? As I said, the code is uh, what you see uh, here, uh, for example, render light on. Uh, this is a CSI anchor with a callback, uh, etc. There is um, some uh, internal booleans to keep state and things like that. Okay? I mean, so far it's just CSI component. Um, during this talk, I will show different uh, features for debugging. So I will start with showing how you would debug on development time. So I put a hand on the green color. Okay, so if I now click on the green color, you will see here there is a halt. You see the green, there is a halt here, you see on the callback. So if I click on the green, then on my development image, uh, I get a debugger right there. Uh, this is a full feature debugger, normal development debugger. Uh, from here, I could resume. And the code will just continue. Okay? So that's regular debugging uh, <coughs> with CSI on development uh, moment. So let's say we have finished development, <coughs> now we are going to deploy. Uh, usually you want to deploy headless because this, uh, this is a web application. Um, I will start first uh, making a deployment for Windows. And I will run that from this uh, same window, and then we will go further. Okay? So, VS <clears throat> uh, Model Doc, so I will stop this, uh, and I will just uh, remove it, I will clean up everything. VS um, Model Doc has this thing which is called uh, XD, which is cross platform, uh, because VA, contrary to other small software, the image would run on the different platforms with VM model is different. You can't run the same image on the different platform. The reason is that um, um, obviously their code is different for the different platforms, like sockets, files, and so on. Other dialects put all together in the same image, and then at random you just know which which one, which class to use or whatever. In, in VA, uh, an image on Windows just get load the code for Windows. Uh, on Unix, you just load the code for Unix. Uh, so you need a way if you are, for example, developing on Windows and you want to create an image for Unix. So that is called cross cross the cross uh, development. Um, this this is also used, uh, and I think. Uh, particularly useful too, uh, even if it's for the same target, uh, I think I would recommend this approach uh, for making a, a production image. So, I will start uh, by creating uh, what is called a, a passive image. A passive image is like, it would bootstrap a very kernel image for a given target operation system that I say in this case, for example, we say Windows, um, and I can say, okay, which features would you like to load on that image? The features are uh, like external uh, projects that are not loaded by default on the image, like CSI or, I don't know, database drivers or whatever. So in this case, what I would say is, okay, create a Windows image, which I will give it a name, uh, Windows small talks, for example, and then I will say uh, that I want to load the seaside feature, and I will create this image. What this will do is create what is called a passive image. A passive image is um, like a snapshot of, uh, of an image that lives within a development image. Okay? So in this case, uh, I will kind of be creating a dead because it's not live, it's not, you cannot execute it, it's like a dead snapshot, uh, but yeah, you know, it's an image. 
uh, you see here you can see Windows small uh, You see this, the menu is different, and I can go back to my development machine. This is the classic development machine, but I can create as many passive image as I want. Okay, so in this case, I just created what is called this passive image, uh, which I just loaded the scissor feature. The next step is to load my code by scissor uh, traffic light. Okay, so I will do the same way as I as I did it for the for the other example. I will go to the configuration maps browser. I will look for CSI, but in this case, I will load the runtime, not the development. Okay. So I will load the develop the runtime. Sorry, the runtime. Okay, done. So I loaded my my code. Uh, the passive image is ready. The next step is to uh, is to create what is called a uh, 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 the menu. It's so tiny. Uh, Gross packaged image. So what that will do now, which is the final step, is to create a final real image out of this passive image. And that will be a, a real executable image like uh, uh, other images. For that, there are a couple of instructions that you must tell uh, to this tool to help you create that final image. This is usually called the packager in VA1, okay? In this case, I will start from uh, some instruction that I have previously sent, which you can see here, this is a like headless image. Um, it, it's not, I mean, the process is quite simple. The first step is to choose which apps I want to load on this final image. On the left side, you see all the, all the available applications, that means all the applications loaded on the passive image, okay? And then I said, okay, and which one do I want to, to really put on my output generated package image? In this case, I already selected which are the, the apps that I want, CSI and, and my example. And the other thing that is uh, very important is to select what is called the starter class. In this case, we, we will use the ABT headless Runtime startup, which uh, we are indicating uh, will be a, a, a headless uh, image. And the entry point is okay, when the image starts, what you want to execute. So in this case, it's my CSI traffic light start application. That method, the only thing it does is start the CSI adapter or nothing else. Okay? And then I give it a name. I will use just win. Okay. Okay. Next step is to uh, reduce the image. So the packager, by default, we try to reduce the image. Basically, we'll do a static analysis of what messages are being sent, and if there are methods that do not have any sender, it will be reduced. If you have classes that do not have references, they will be rejected. Um, of course. Uh, Nowadays, more and more we do, we, we do reflection, or we do metaprogramming, uh, you know, with a perform, or class active, and we put a symbol, or whatever thing that code, uh, static code analysis can, cannot find. So usually there are a couple of warnings. In this case, uh, we, uh, we still have some warnings that are part of our base apps. Uh, we are working on getting down to zero. Uh, but most of them are for false positives uh, warnings. But here you would eventually see warnings like, uh, I don't know, a, a class that you reference uh, does not exist or some, things like that. In this case, it's no big deal and there's nothing very important. And then it allows you, the tool allows you to send all these instructions into a class. I click no, I click don't, but you can realize now who I created the original that I choose when I started. So the first time I did this, I started with the UI, and on the last step I say, save instructions, please. Uh, you choose a class name, you choose a, a, an app, 
and those trucks will, will be saved to a class. And then you can work with the class and not use the distraction from the UI. You can even do this kind of from a script if you want. Okay, so. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to this is a little bit, but thank you, Richie. Let's not save it. Uh, and now it's creating the final uh, ICX. In, in VS Motor, the extension is ICX for the images. <coughs> okay, it finished. So uh, the image is output on the same directory where your environment is, which in this case is my VS Motox, Motox 2008 uh, demo. Um, here you can see all of these files have been just generated. If you see the timestamp, uh, well, I want to draw it, you will have to believe it. They were just generated. Um, so this is the ICX that we are interested in. And then these ES files, this is just statistics files, which help you debug packaging issues where it shows which apps end up into the image, which symbols, the, the usage, so on. I mean, the statistics files to help you debug the packaging process. Anyway, um, we have that image now. If you can see, it's four megabytes. So we have the CSI image uh, with that example running in uh, four megabytes. So I will now open, um, just to show how would you run this. In this case, you can um, move this image to any other window, get your VM and run it. In this case, I will just run it from here just to show you that, that it works. Um, in VS Talk on Windows, the binary to execute something headless it is called esvo.x. So this is the virtual machine to run headless. And I will just say, uh, is like packaging? No, sorry. Uh, um, CSI traffic light win.icx. Uh, and an inif uh, ini file, which in the case I will use the default one, the ini file is some uh, initialization configuration, which in this example it doesn't matter. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah, wrong parameters.
with so far I just connected the pipe and my machine uh, because of what I will show now they need to be on the same uh, on the same network okay uh, so let's see I should get my unit here so now what I will do is uh, uh, let's see let's double check that the the pi uh, it's responding me so I will do okay <coughs> the pi is responding so I will uh, I will enter the pi via SM S, uh, SFTP uh, basically uh, here I will connect. Yeah. The total commander has an issue when you change the network. Okay. So I will connect into my. Uh, this is my Raspberry Pi. If you see uh, the properties, it's, uh, it, it's that machine. So trust me. Okay, what you can see on the right side now, this is the, the Raspberry Pi, this is the Linux uh, layout uh, that it's stored on my micro SD. And if I go to Home Pi, which is the default user, there is a, a folder which is called Seaside Traffic Light. This folder, it's exactly the same as what uh, V8 uh, calls uh, several right times, so you can uh, aside from the installer, where you install the development environment, uh, model also provides uh, what is called the server runtime, which is basically the VM, which is on the bin directory here, and then some external file that you may need. So this is basically like, like the VM runtime, okay? Uh, this is exactly as it, as it is shipped. Uh, the only thing I did is um, I created an EP file, but this is the default one, nothing is fancy. And then I create this little bash, which you can see it's really uh, nothing. Uh, it just uh, CDs into that directory. It supports the correct uh, LAN for this model. It uh, defines the bash root, includes the VIN directory into the LD library path. So this is so that the VM libraries are found. And basically, just execute uh, the VM, which is called uh, ESNX. When you don't have X, uh, you, you need to use a specific binary, which is called ESNX, which is no X. So this binary has no dependency on, the, uh, on X. So this, this Linux that I'm running here has no X running. And in fact, the middleware state is 4 gigabytes. The micro SD. Uh, and then I just pass the image uh, and the in file. Okay? So let's uh, now what, what I need to do is I need to move uh, the ICX uh, from my machine to uh, into the bike. And then I will connect, I will connect via SSH into the Pi and I will run the program. Okay, so I will connect via SSH. SSH. Okay, oh, so I am now inside the, the, the Raspberry. And um, here I will just run the season traffic line. Okay, you can see there the, the VM started, now season has started on the same port 777. Okay, so let's see if it works. So, uh, to try it from, from this window machine, I will need the IP of the Raspberry, uh, the same as I needed when I connected the SSH. But, uh, using this uh, you can, the network can resolve IPs by, by hostname. So in this case, the hostname of the Raspberry is Mariano Pi Light. 
So this would actually resolve the IP uh, of that machine. Okay, you can see uh, it's uh, working. So this, uh, to, to summarize, it's a, a 4 megabyte headless image running on a headless uh, Linux on an ARM processor on the pipe. <coughs> okay? I now continue with the debugging that I was uh, originally trying to show you. If I now click on, on the green button, uh, we will uh, get something uh, different. Let's go here. This is the IP that was set. Um, yeah, it's an IP, okay. Okay. So what I'm doing here is um, on the. I am saying that for this passive image of Unix, uh, the workstation IP it's this machine, the Windows machine. Okay. So when I package and I make the Unix runtime image, um, it would now uh, go to go to reach the development machine. So if you remember when I created the, the package, I, I selected um, an ABT uh, re remote debugging startup. And what this allows me is that when there's an error, like in this case I will click on, on the green button and that will trigger the halt. I should get, I cross my finger, that I should get a debugger uh, on the oh, it's not enabled. Okay, so I should have get an, uh, an error. No, let me start it again. Now, let's see if it's working. Okay. And if I click on the green, now I should get... Come on. The, the wrong uh, stack down. Okay, I, I, I think I should start that first. Yeah, so when I package this, I forgot the order because I, sorry, I have to change the order on, on which I was going to talk. So just that it's clear, when I make the packager, I choose, uh, for that case, I choose the uh, ABT. Uh, the ABT startup, startup. So that means that there is an, an error. The error will be dumped. The stack will be dumped into a file. So if you see here, it says that there was a halt and it was dumped into this C side 00 uh, SDF file. Okay. If I broke this, I can see it on the file. Uh, if I just refresh this, I should see here, CSI, at the end it's a 5 megabyte file. And this is a binary snapshot of the stack that happened on the pipe. Okay? So I will move that into my uh, development machine, which is the, the Windows one. And I will see if I can debug that. It's like uh, similar like, like to Fuel, when you say you like the stack on one machine and you materialize on, on the other one. So, now I will go back to my development machine, I will go to Unix passive image and I will say 
tools. Ah, it's the last one. Open the bugger. Okay? And so I open the bugger. The bugger is empty, obviously, right now. And I can say, uh, pro start, no, processes, add start trace. And here I can choose the file that was generated on the Raspberry Pi. And I can say, okay, divide this. And basically, you can see how it's launch uh, a debugger uh, exactly in the step where the halt uh, was uh, put. And you can see here, this is a dumped object and you can inspect, uh, you can see test, uh, what's the screen. And so I just created a debugger on my development machine out of a stack dump that happened on another headless 4 megabyte machine. So this is the, the first, uh, I think, the first step on a very improvement uh, the debugging scenario. Uh, the original is just a wall bug, you know, when you like, uh, like uh, plain string uh, uh, text file. This one is uh, much better, so you kind of have the, the, the live stack uh, on your development machine. Um, and the other alternative that I was I wanted to show you is the remove debug. So that one is you can use the uh, uh, this file. You can debug it whenever you want. You can debug it later. You can debug it asynchronously. The other is called what is called remote debugger, uh, which I will show you. I will just create a new package or image. It will be exactly the same. The only thing we will do differently is that now we will use the uh, the startup class, we will use this ABT interactive debug startup class. Okay, that's the only difference. I will just call it Unix uh, uh, remote, something like that. And I will just create it. Um, this, is, this is why I really needed to have both on the same network, not for the stack, for the stack that, but for this, uh, they will connect via TCP IP, the Pi and the development machine. So let's see if it was generated. Uh, again, this is three, uh, three, three megabytes and a half image with the remote debug support. Uh, so I will uh, override the previous image with this one. Uh, I think I should stop, I should already stop, yeah. Um, okay. Let me be sure the cost spot is running. Please. Let me be sure I am on the correct network. Okay. Uh, okay, so theoretically, already copied. Yeah. Okay, now now ready to cross your finger. Okay, since I started, uh, and again, I will go to the same IP, same application. Okay, so far it works, and now I will click on the green button. And if it works, I should get here by the remote debugger. So here I am actually lively debugging the error that happened on the pipe. Uh, if you see it, uh, for example, self, which indicates it's a CSI component, is a proxy. Um, you can inspect, uh, you can see it's a proxy, you can see the status and all, all that kind of stuff. You can inspect uh, these uh, variables, you can walk over the stack. Um, and this is, again, this is going over the wire. Mm. And of course, if it's, uh, in this case, I, I put a halt because I was, I wanted to show that I was able to resume. But 
the same would happen if you get an exception. It's not just this, this, one, this doesn't mean it only works if you do self height. If there was a, an unexpected error, it would work also, just that you won't be able to resume because most exceptions are not resumable. Can you change the code? Yes, I can. I can, can you take the halt out? Yeah, I can show you right now. If I can see for uh, for example, I can browse the class. And all of the menu you see here, all all of the menu entries, all of these, all of the everything is for the passive image I am working on. This is nothing for the development machine. It's all about the pie. So, for example, I can say, okay, this class. Let's uh, let's take the, the let's change the title of the. So that was let's see browse references to the class. And let's browse this class. And render traffic light. Let's say here small talks. And I save it. Okay. Now uh, I can plug, I can plug the I can click resume if it's okay. Resume. And there you go. You get the resume. So that's it, yes, you can um, you can divide, you can inspect, you can change code. Uh, it's not bulletproof, but it 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 it, it works uh, well enough. Um, um, okay, so that was uh, what I want you to show about remote debugger. Um, can you save the image again over there? Can you save that change or do you have to save it all? Uh, it is changed, it, it is saved automatically. Uh, and in fact, something which is curious is that um, if you then it kind of keeps track of the changes, so it warns you if the passive image got out of date with the ICX that you are remote debugging, they would tell you, I have a different Do you want to reapply the latest uh, changes and uh, apply the changes and save it? <coughs> um, okay. Um, the other thing uh, I wanted to, sh to show you, and that would be the end for the for the demo. Um, it's the following. I will stop my Windows now. Uh, in fact, I will unplug this. Um, what I try to do? Let me see if I can. Um, Let me, let me try something. So, something uh, I wanted to show is that I just uh, plug this uh, physical semaphore, uh, which uh, uses this uh, General purpose input output uh, pins is one of the four things. Each light has a, a, a pin number. Um, Raspbian allows you to, uh, it gives you a library which is called the GPU library so that you can manipulate the pins, uh, send data, uh, receive data, uh, voltage to supply, I don't know, whatever you want to plug there. And if I think it should be still alive, yeah. If you see, I have this other uh, CSI. If you remember, when I registered the CSI application, there were, there were actually two that I registered. One was the regular one, and the other one is this one. So this is a subclass which is registered on a different as a different CSI app, which is GPL traffic light. And the only thing different is that when I click, it switch the uh, the light here. Okay, this is very simplistic. 
uh, but it's, it proves that we have uh, a binding from BS one to, to manage the pins. And the way that works, it's, it's really it's really simple. I can show you quickly because I'm running out of time and, and I wanted to show you one last thing before I finish. Um, This is a GPO traffic light component. So, as you can see, it's just a subclass of the original one. Um, the only thing it changed is that uh, when it said that, for example, the green light, aside from doing what Super does, it just said, okay, Raspberry traffic light, set the green LED on. Okay, and the same for red, and the same for yellow, and then just the two all off that do more or less the same. Um, so if we see what this traffic light does, it's basically a uh, raspberry traffic light. This is a verification I did, uh, which has the this GPU router. And here, where you define the, the pins, uh, in this case, uh, this is pin number nine, this is pin number ten and eleven, uh, and this class end up using, this is another verification of mine, but this one end up using the real GPO wrapper that we have in this motor, which is the, this, uh, this GPO interface. If you see, if you broke this class, this is part of um, an application which is called Raspberry Hardware Interface, uh, Raspberry Hardware Interface Core App, whatever. So this is the wrapper uh, that we use. Uh, but as you can see, there's not too much magic. It just, you just define the pins and uh, just send the data. And what I, want, what I wanted to show you is that we are actually able to not just run VS Moto on the by, like just running Seaside, but also we have a binding to the libgpo library. So that allows you to plug Whatever, there are a million of things that you can plug into the pins that are very fun. Um, and so I think that's, uh, that's something uh, cool. Um, can it read data as well? Uh, data? Yeah, it, it, it can read. Uh, there are um, sensors or things that you can read from. Um, if you want to show you, uh, tomorrow I can bring a couple of box with a lot of sensor stuff. And, uh, um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, let me try the last thing that I wanted to show you, uh, and now yes, is to uh, basically I will change the microSD. In this case, it was a 4 gigabytes microSD with a headless Linux, which was Raspbian Lite, and now I will plug. Uh, a Raspbian, a full Raspbian desktop on a, this is a 16 gigabytes uh, micro C. Okay, and I will just get uh, the projector and I will plug it into the pipe. Okay, I will plug a USB how where I can plug uh, mouse, keyboard, whatever you want. So in this case, you see this little hub where I plug a mouse. And I have my wireless uh, Bluetooth keyboard here, which I can use. Somehow, if I manage to open it. Okay. So um, I will power this on. Uh, hope it works. Okay, give it some time to boot. So now, uh, Rust then uh, it's booting. Again, my machine, I can turn it off. There's nothing on my machine now. It's just the pipe. Okay? Just in case. You don't believe me. Okay, so what I basically want to show now is that 
aside from being able to run helpless on the pipe, we can even run helpful. So it's not that you are going to develop on the pipe because, I mean, it doesn't make much sense unless, for example, for the GPO uh, library, we develop a lot on the pipe because it was easier to test. Right, because on the other way you don't have the pins. Uh, you will have to mock the, the GPO. Uh, <clears throat> so, that's Raspbian, Gutin, uh, my mouse, okay, it works. I don't want to touch. Okay, mm, I will, no one to show much except open a terminal. Uh, let's see if my keyboard works. Ah, I need to turn it on. Second. I will show each other the image starts. Student, you can get 
uh, a license for free, and of course you can buy development license too. Okay, now I am done. So we are time for questions. Or... Yeah. Thank you. 